Okay, we're going to start module seven. We're going to be working on this for the next couple of weeks. Now, this isn't like your typical uh, geometry assignment, okay? Uh, things that we typically go over. This one seems to be a little bit easier to work on, and uh, it's something that you're familiar with, okay? This is over polygons. Over the next couple of days, we're going to talk about polygons and their properties, and then we'll finish up with quadrilaterals and their properties. Okay, but we're looking at the polygons as a whole in different ways to name them. So the first thing, excuse me, that we're going to look at is what makes a polygon. Okay, what makes a polygon? Well, you have some stickers over here that says not a polygon and a polygon. So we're going to label some of these. So let's look at the first one, this circle. Okay, this circle is not a polygon. So you're just going to want to drag that over. This is not a polygon. This, however, is a polygon. No corners is no polygon. Yeah, the circle is not a polygon. This is a polygon. So what's the first difference you notice between what's not a polygon and what is a polygon? No corners. corners. Okay. Can anybody be more specific than that even than corners? What's something else? What, I, what you're saying is the polygon has corners on it. Okay, what else? Yeah, this one has sides. This one has only one side. And what are the sides? They're round. Okay. This shape, this third one, is not a polygon. Now, it has corners. It has a corner right here. However, it also has a rounded shape. It has sides. But again, the main thing that's keeping this from not being a polygon is this curve. What about this one? What do you think this is going to be? This is not a polygon. For one, it, it's an open shape. There is no close, closeness to it. Okay. This is an interesting one right here. Okay, you say it's a polygon. I say it's not a polygon. But it actually it does. But how many areas does it have? Two. Polygon can only have one. Okay. This heart shape is not a polygon. Heart shape is not a polygon. This next one, in fact, these last two are polygons. Okay, they are polygons. So let's talk about some of the characteristics that we've talked about. About why something is a polygon and why something is not a polygon. Here's three characteristics that we talked about. One, it was there were some curved pieces. Okay, it can't be a polygon and have a curve in it. 
You can't have intersecting points. And the last one, it can't be open. Everything has to be closed off. It can't have curved. You can't have anything intersecting where you have more than one area. So I can use these to create a good definition for a polygon. So a good definition might be a polygon is a closed shape with straight edges and one interior. Now, does it say anything by limiting the amount of sides it has? No. So it could have 100 sides. As long as it fits this definition, it could still be a polygon. We don't normally see a polygon that large, but there might be. Now, guys, our Wi-Fi has been really spotty. I don't know if it happened in your first hour classes, but it's been really spotty this morning. So I'll try to keep an eye on it as we go along. So are we good? Now, we have a lot of notes today, and we're going to fill in a lot of blanks. But... The blanks that we fill in today will make our work a whole lot easier from here on out. So that's the reason that we're doing it that way. Okay, let's talk about some different ways to classify polygons. One way is to label a polygon whether or not it's convex or concave. Now, what do you think of when you hear the word cave? Concave. What do you visualize in your mind when you hear the word cave? Oh, okay, but what, describe it to me if I didn't know what a cave was. A hole in the mountain, dark hole. Something you probably don't want to walk into. There's no telling what's in the back of the cave. <clears throat> this time of year, it might be a bear. Okay? Or some sort of animal trying to sleep. Okay? I wouldn't... I'd stay away from caves as much as possible. Are you fine? No. But I don't go diving in caves either. So, I'm not exactly the cave shape of person to do that. I stay out of tight spaces. All right, convex. Here's a convex shape, a triangle. This is a convex. Now, I like to describe it as if I were to pour water on this shape, the water would just fall off of it. Okay? But what happens if I pour water on this shape? See where the water might get stuck in this spot? has an indention in it. If I were to pour water on it and water is going to get stuck in a spot, that means it's concave. Convex, concave. So we have some other shapes over here. This one is concave. Again, if I can pour water on it and water stick is going to stick in an area, and that's the reason I label it that way. This shape is convex. As long as it doesn't have an indention. And there's two shapes left. This one is also convex. And this last one is concave. So my last hour said, well, Mr. Hurst, if I were to pour water on this shape, water wouldn't stick anywhere. Yeah, not in this form, but if I were to flip it over, it would. 
So don't just look at it as the way it is. If I can flip it and water can get stuck in it, then it's going to be concave. Convex, concave. Now, another reason notes are so important. You're going to be doing this assignment here in about 25 minutes. And it's going to say, please describe the shapes as convex or concave. Some of you are going to go, I have no, I, I, I don't remember what that was. So if you have notes, go back and look at it. Oh, well, that's what a convex shape looks like. That's what a concave shape looks like. Then it makes things a whole lot easier. All right, another way to classify polygons is by the number of sides it has. So we're going to name all of these polygons that have this many sides. Now, some of them we've worked with quite often. Some of these you might not know the name of, but they'll make sense. A three-sided polygon is called a triangle. triangle. Now, the four-sided polygon is interesting. Somebody tell me what the name of a four-sided polygon is. Square. Okay. Rectangle. Or quadrilateral. Squares and rectangles are a subset of the overall group. Jonathan was right. The overall group of a four-sided polygon is called a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral. That's the parent name. Like my last name is Hurst. My wife and my kids, their last name is Hurst, but they have different first names. So a square and rectangle are like that. Yes, we all have dark names. We all have last the same last names. We have different like, the, like, like we got married, you had the same last name? No. It's not quite how that works, I don't think. You could have the same, same last name. You could. I did know some people that did. Both had the last name of Jones, and they, you know, she never did have to change her name. But notice a three sided polygon has the first name of Tri, four sided is Quad. That is a pentagon. Penta means five. So a lot of these you're familiar with, you just might not be familiar with in terms of polygons. But you've heard the first parts of them before. Pentagon. Some of you might not have known this. But the reason that government building is called a pentagon is because it has five sides instead of a regular four, like a regular building. I told that to the class one year, and they're like, whoa, I didn't know that. But yeah, that's the reason it's called the pentagon. Six-sided polygon is a he hexagon. Hexagon. Hex. Any of you ever have tools, a hex set? The reason that they're called hex keys or hex wrenches is because the screws have six sides on them, or the bolts have six sides on them. Anybody know what the word for seven is? Heptagon. Hepta. Heptagon. Usually the first eight is what you're familiar with. The eight-sided one is usually the easiest one for people. Octagon. But that's a good, you know, you said octopus. Octa means it has eight legs. That's the reason it's called that. Yeah. Well, the reason it's called octopus is because it has eight legs. Octagon. Nine. 
You might know the non. Nonagon. Non. Oh, you're making room. No. <laughs> I wish I was making room. You can go home tonight and ask your parents, so you know what a nine sided polygon is? You don't even know what a triangle is. And there you go. Yeah, they ain't finished. They ain't finished. You're allowed. What do you call 10 years in a lot? A decade. So a 10 sided polygon is called a decagon. See how that works? I bet if you were to look up a hundred sided polygon, you'd be called a centigon. I'm going to look that up. I've never looked that up before. Let me look it up. Hundred sided polygon. Century. Oh, I don't know what's a hectagon. I was wrong on that one. All right, 12 sided. Yes, we're skipping over 11. A 12 sided polygon is called a dodecagon. Dodecagon. And then I just threw up, tw most sides have names. It's just if we were to keep going, we could go on forever. Okay? So I just threw up 20. The 20 sided polygon is called an icosagon. Icosagon. Now, we don't necessarily have to use names all the time. Like if I didn't know a 20 sided polygon was called an icosagon, I could use this general terminology that we're going to use at the end. Any amount of sides a polygon has, and let's say I represent that with the letter N, I'm just going to call it a N gon. So if it has 23 sides, and I don't have any clue what that name is, I'm just going to call it a 23 gon. So you know it has 23 sides. Okay, that's the reason we just have this at the bottom. So if I didn't know a 20-sided polygon was an icosagon, I could just call it a 20-gon. So I can classify polygons on whether or not they're convex or concave, now I can classify polygons based off the number of sides. The third one is how to classify polygons based on their sides and angles. Are we all good with this slide? So I can call it a regular polygon or an irregular polygon. Both of these are pentagons. They both have five sides. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. However, a regular polygon, all the sides and all the angles are exactly the same. An irregular polygon has no sides or angles that are exactly the same. Or not all, I should say. Some of them might be, but not all of them. So they're either regular, where all the sides and all the angles are the same, or they're irregular, where they're not. So for the remainder of the day, we're only going to talk about regular polygons. And this is the most boring aspect of this part of the notes, because we're going to be filling out quite a few tables. Okay, but I'm going to talk about the angles of polygons. For the remainder of the two days, we're mainly going to talk about the angles. We're going to talk about the interior angles and the exterior angles. So let's start with interior angles. If a convex polygon, remember convex means it has no indentions, 
is a convex polygon has n sides, and S is the sum of the measure of its interior angles, then I can use this formula to figure out what, how many met or how many degrees it is. Let me repeat that. It's confusing the way I said it. If I were to break up a pentagon into how many triangles are in it, how many triangles are there? Three. Now, you know what all the interior angles of a triangle add up to be. What do all the inside angles of a triangle add up to be? 180. 180. All the inside angles of a triangle add up to be 180. Well, if there's three triangles in a pentagon, then I'm going to do 3 times 180, and that gives me how many degrees are in that shape. So a pentagon, if I were to add up all the interior angles, would add up to be 540 degrees. So this formula is what we're going to use. Sides minus 2 times 180, and that will work for us every single time. Now, exterior angles are a whole lot easier. Here's what exterior angles look like. They always add up to be 360. It never changes. You could have 100 sides, and all the angles would add up to be 360. Somebody measured all the angles of a 100-sided polygon to prove that. We don't have to. It's always 360. Now, if I wanted to find each individual angle, I would take 360 divided by 3, and that gives me 120. Now, we're going to put in a little bit of work ahead of time so that we don't have to worry about doing these figures if we're talking about certain polygons. And I'll show you what that means here in just a minute. But we're going to start off with a triangle. Triangle has three sides. Well, how many triangles are in a triangle? It's not a trick question. There's zero triangles in a triangle. There are zero urids sitting in that desk. Huh? One. Now, you can do that by taking the number of sides minus two. Three minus two is one, or you just know a triangle has one triangle. I'm gonna take that number and multiply it times 180, and that will always tell me the sum of the interior angles. So one times 180 is 180. To find each interior angle. I take that sum and divide it by how many sides there are. And these formulas work every single time. Okay, that's the formula I'm using. So I'm going to take this sum, 180, and divide by 3. So each interior angle of a regular triangle is exactly 60 degrees. I guarantee there will be a test question that says, what is the sum of the exterior angles of anything? Okay. I'm going to say blank. You can put anything in that blank. And you would be amazed at how many people get that question wrong. The sum of the exterior angles of any polygon is always... 360. Always 360. And then to find this each exterior, you take that 360 divided by how many sides there are. So 360 divided by 3 is 120.
Don't fall behind. There's a bunch of blanks. So now we're going to start the process again with quadrilateral. So to find the number of triangles in a quadrilateral, I'm going to take the amount of sides minus 2. So 4 minus 2 is 2. There are two triangles if you were to split it up in a quadrilateral. So to find the sum of interior angles, I'm going to take that 2 and multiply it times 180. So the sum of interior angles is 360. Always remember what the difference between sum is and the difference between, or, uh, between each. Sum and each. I have a lot of people that get on the wrong column when they're doing their homework. Sum, each, sum, each. So to find each interior, I'm going to take that sum and divide by the side. So 360 divided by 4 is 90. The sum of exterior is what? 360. It doesn't change. In fact, if you wanted to go ahead and type in 360 all the way down, that's fine. To find each exterior angle, I'm going to take 360 and divide by 4. So that would be 90. This is the only polygon where each interior and each exterior is the same. This is a perfect square. So, without even doing the n minus 2, can somebody predict what this next number is going to be? 3. Pentagon has three triangles in it. 3 times 180, 540. Five forty divided by five will give me this next box one oh eight. Three sixty doesn't change. Three sixty divided by five is seventy two. So this column will go up. This column will always go down. Hexagon, there are four triangles. Six minus two is four. Or you can go down the list. Four times 180 gives me 720. So the sum of the interior angles of a hexagon is 720. Then to find each, I take 720 divided by 6. 120. Three sixty. And then to find each exterior, I take 360 divided by 6, the amount of sides it has, and that is 60. So here's the reason this is going to be helpful. Let's say you have a homework question that says, what is the measure of each exterior angle of a pentagon? All you have to do is go to pentagon, 
Make sure you're in the right column each exterior and it's already done for you. You don't have to do any calculations. It's done. So we're trying to do some work ahead of time to help you in some of the work that you're going to be doing later. All right, so I want you to take a few minutes on this next slide and fill in the rest of these columns. Okay, and if you're watching on video, Pause it right now and fill in the rest of the column on your notes. Let's finish up this last one. In some cases, we might have larger polygons. Now, I know that a 20-sided polygon based on our notes is called an icosagon, but in case we forget that, Let's just call it a 20 gone. That's fine. It's the same thing. But sometimes I might have to change. You know, it's not going to be easy to do. Like a test question might be 73 sides. Okay. How many triangles are in a 20 sided polygon? I'm going to do 20 minus 2. And that'll tell me how many triangles there are. 18. So to find the sum of all the inside angles, I'm going to take that 18 and multiply it times 180. So all the interior angles of a 20-sided polygon would add up to be 3,240. That's a lot of it's a lot of degrees. To find each, I take that sum, 3,240, and divide it by how many sides there are, 20. So 3,240 divided by 20 is 162 degrees. So each interior angle of a 20 sided polygon is 162 degrees. Now, what's the sum of the exterior angles of a 20 sided polygon? 360. That never changes. But each exterior angle is 360 divided by 20, the number of sides. So that's 18. So the process doesn't change no matter how big the polygon is. Excuse me, a 25-sided polygon. 25 gone. The number of triangles is 25 minus 2, 23. To find the sum, I'm going to take that 23 times 180. That's a bunch of triangles. Gives me 4,140. To find each interior, I take 4,140 and divide by how many sides there are? 25. So 165.6. This number will never go over 180. Think about it. 180 is a straight line. It will never go past that. It will get close to it eventually, but it will never go past it. The sum of exterior is still 360. And to find each exterior, I take 360 divided by 25. 
that gives me 14.4. So on your own, I want you to take a couple of minutes and do the last two rows. Do this row, and you might have to use a calculator. Might have to use a calculator. Do these last two rows. Take a couple minutes. So a 75 sided polygon is called a 75 gon. The number of triangles is 75 minus 2, 73. Guys, it don't matter if you copy, I mean, because later on you need to know how to do this. So you now it might have to copy it down, but I hope hopefully you work these out before you to see if you got them right. Find the sum of interior, I take 73 times 180. That's 13,140. It's a very large number. To find each interior, I take this sum and divide by how many sides there are. So 13,140 divided by 75 is 175.2. The sum of exterior never changes, it's still 360 but each exterior will be 360 divided by 75. So 4.8 degrees. Now I'll be interested to see the difference of jumping up to 200. It's called a 200 yawn. I'm sure there's a real name for it. There are 198 triangles in this polygon. 200 minus two. 198 times 180 is 35,640. You divide that by 200. Each interior, now it's a little bit less than 180. Sum of exterior angles is 360, and then 360 divided by 200 is 1.8 degrees. One point eight degrees. Even if you go up to 500, let's see, 500 times 180 divided by 502, it's still around 179. In fact, I think I need to change this number, 35640 divided by 200. Yeah, it's 178.2 actually. Hold on just a second, I'm almost done. Now, here's your assignment for today. In this folder, Activity 15 Polygons, we're gonna do the first part today, and then we're gonna finish this up on Wednesday. Part one involves the first question, type in the name of each polygon. So you're going to count the number of sides, you're going to look at your notes, and you're going to write in that name. Pretty simple. Hopefully you count the right amount of sides. Second question, is it convex or concave? Will the water flow off of it, or will the water get stuck somewhere? Three, is it regular or not regular? or irregular in some cases. Four, what is one interior angle? So that's each interior angle. This is where those notes come in handy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I go to my notes and I go to eight, each interior is 135. 
So I go back over here, I go down to 135, there it is. And that's what I'm gonna put in that place. You've already got it done. You just have to look at your notes. And then the last question is each exterior angle. So it's the same process. So you've got plenty of time to work on this. You should be able to get it done. Start out on a good note, get your assignment done. And then Wednesday we'll work on part two. Okay. The one chair angle was. Okay.